is our last question before we're going to take a brief break and we're going to get some of the responses we've got from the audience together, formulate about three more questions which we'll do the wrap up. But for this question, uh, this is one that I formulated based off of some comments we received on our Twitter feed. And for any of you that are using Twitter, the hashtag for tonight's event is hashtag MDGOVAA. So if you'd like to tweet in questions, uh, I think we've already announced this before, but feel free. This question is about what happens on June 25th. So on June 25th, one of you may very well be the Republican nominee for governor. At that point, you're going to need to transition to win by appealing to unaffiliated and Democratic voters. In order to win statewide, you're going to need significant inroads with voters into some of Maryland's largest jurisdictions like Montgomery County, Prince George's County, as well as Baltimore City. How do you plan to reach these voters if you are the Republican nominee for governor? And we'll start with Delegate George. Well, thank you so much. I've already been doing it. I have a very strong conservative record, yet I, I appeal across party lines. I don't do it by running to the middle. I speak to the middle ways they understand. That's how I won in my district. That's how I won Annapolis against the Speaker of the House. And I work on issues. I work on, if their issue is the poor, Republicans have to offer solutions, and I do. I've already been working on it because I've gone to Baltimore City and I've talked about my plan for Baltimore and have Baltimore Children's Zones designed after Harlem Children's Zones where there's these incubators of crime and gangs to get the police in there and make these kids um, much more secure and get their learning and it works. You don't have to put that much money into it. It works. It stops that going on. I talked about building the tax base and bringing things to Baltimore and jobs. I've been to Prince George's County. You know the number one thing they're scared of? Washington, D.C. is becoming another Rome. It's the third fastest growing urban center. Do you know what they want to do with their public housing? They want to push it into Prince George's. So just like in the early 80s, Prince George's County is saying, we've had enough. We don't want any more public housing. So I'm talking about the ideas to do. Now, Prince George's is prime right uh, for those mid middle class uh, jobs and small businesses. And I know how to do that as a small businessman. I used to help minorities write business plans uh, for Bank Annapolis as a volunteer work. I've done a lot of that type of work. I have success doing that. I was the one who stopped, it was my bill and my work to stop giving illegal driver's licenses in Maryland. I tried for three years and got it through in 2009. I had as many Democrats co-sponsor that as I did Republicans. I got a repeal of the tech service tax. I did that by building bipartisan support. And I got a cap on the vote excise tax. I could go on. I've been successful and I've built bipartisan support. And I get it from people in those areas that you're talking about. Mr. Lawley. When we announced in September, my first order of business was to go around to those four, if not three if not four, dominant areas in this state that tend to dominate elections for all the right reasons. Insanity is defined by doing the same thing and expecting different results. I took a lot of flack for that, but I went into Prince George's County, Baltimore City, my business is in Prince George's County, Baltimore City, Montgomery County, we began working there from September all the way through January. As a result, I'm proud to announce that we, are, that we already have currently set up Democrats for Lawler in all four of those areas right now. Not after June, right now. Because we knew it was that important. We wanted you, when you wrote your $4,000 check to me, to know you weren't throwing good money after bad. That you actually had a candidate that you knew could win a general election. Now, I'll share something with you. I was in Montgomery County. We chose to go there as one of our stops. Um, and this is just kind of the, the, the outreach that I believe it takes. You don't have to sacrifice your character. People understand and believe in 90% of the same things that you do. It's just in how you approach people. But on this bus tour, one of the people had driven up and saw the bus and said, who's that? And the Fox 45 camera person said, that's Charles Lawler. He's running for governor. She said, well, what party is he? Not what's his policy, not what's his platform, what party is he? Well, you know, he's a Republican. She said, well, you can tell him to stay on the bus, he won't get my vote. I hopped off the bus because the, the cameraman said, Mr. Lawler, you got another one. I went out and talked to her. 35 minutes later, I'm rushing the story because she's about to put the red placard up. That, that young lady was standing outside of Starbucks holding my hand and my wife's hand and praying for us that we would win the Republican election that she heads Democrats for Lawler in Montgomery County. That's how we're going to do it. Well, um, what's the question again? No. <laughs> no, the question was about how are you going to win? Oh, I got you. You know what I'm going to do? 
I'm going to tell the Democrats that their entitlements are under attack, and they're going to lose them. I'm going to let them know that look at what they did to everybody's pensions. You know, they took your pensions. Don't think that they're not going to cut into your welfare check. So I'll just tell them, you know, something like I'll help them with entitlement, and I really won't. <laughs> but I mean, I think it's going to take a trip. <laughs> They've been playing games with us. I think they know. Yeah, but uh, you know, we just got to you know, tell them that we're going to hold everybody accountable for what they're doing. We're going to get this done right. We're going to uh, do government right. And they're going to be able to trust us. And that's how we're going to get a vote. I've been talking to a lot of Democrats. And they say that it's, they feel that the Democratic Party has turned their back on that. Now they're looking for a new party. And they're coming back to the Republican Party because we're, we were the true party from the beginning. Uh, you know, so that's what I'm going to do. You know, and, and then I'll trick them too. Okay, let's go back. 1979, I run for Howard and Grace City Council. Seven to one, Democrat to Republican. Everybody said, how are you going to win? I worked at it. I won. Defeated a four-term incumbent Democrat. He still puts a sign in his yard for me because I didn't attack him personally. I told the people who I was, what my plan was, what I could do. They voted for me. I won. I ran for the House of Delegates. First time a Republican won in that district. I was told, you're not going to win. What would you do? I ran. I won. I knocked off a five-term incumbent Democrat who was the majority leader. I run for the state Senate. Uh, you're not going to win. I became the first senator ever elected to that district as a Republican. I knocked off the incumbent Democrat. I go back and decide to finish my career as an educator, and then I get encouraged to run for mayor for the second time. How are you going to win? An incumbent Democrat's never been defeated before. I run. I defeat an incumbent Democrat for the first time in five decades an incumbent had lost. I have done it. It's not just that I talk about how to do it. I know how to do it. But here's another key for everybody in this room. When Bob Ehrlich ran in 2010, if the Republicans in the state of Maryland who had voted for McCain had gotten off their seats and voted in the gubernatorial election, he'd have won. Too many Republicans stay home in gubernatorial races and don't vote in that race. we got to get them off their seat. Because here's the other thing. All four of us have agreed on June 25th. We're going to support the winner, no matter who it is, so we can win.